streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and BlastTheRadio.com, this is The Lowell Green Show. The number to call and be heard around the world is 613-413-2217 or email Lowell at BlastTheRadio.com. And now, here is Lowell Green. John. So, folks, what do you think we should do with LeBreton Flats? After six years of not coming up with any ideas, dithering, stumbling, bumbling, the NCC says, you know what? Have you got any ideas? Because we've got 28 acres here, prime acres or hectares or whatever it is these days, and we don't know what to do with it. Right in the heart of the capital city of Canada, we have no idea what to do with it. I mean, we, we approved a condo here, the ugliest condo on the face of the planet, just voted by uh, just about every reputable firm in the world to be the ugliest, ugliest condo ever seen anywhere. Aliens refuse to land anywhere near it. It's so damned ugly. The, uh, the War Museum, I don't know who, whose idea that was. That's, that's a winner, no question. But it's the only one in all of that. So we need your ideas, folks. What do you want? One, one thing, I'll tell you this, and I think, John, you agree with me on this. We've got to make sure that we open up the river. To me, whatever we put in there, we need to have the river available, restaurants, cafes, walkways, bikeways, turtleways, whatever ways we want along the river. Here, here. Access to the river. Absolutely. Um, you know, boardwalk, maybe a boardwalk along there, something like something of that of that nature. Yes. Almost every other civilized city in the world with a with a riverfront like that has, has opened up the river. And as you've pointed out many times, accurately, there's almost no access aside from the Ritz Cafe on the canal. Um, where, where, where would you have a lunch today or dinner uh, next to the river? And here we are. You're right. We're at the confluence of three major rivers. And there's not a single restaurant or cafe or anything on on either on any of the rivers. Makes no sense whatsoever. So whatever it is, that's that's my contribution here. But what what would you like to see there? Um, an aquarium. I I I, I love beautiful aquariums. Uh, there's a, a a grand one now in Toronto, as you know. It's a major tourist attraction. Um, casino. Nobody has suggested a casino. How about a first-rate upscale casino? Uh, add a lot of a lot of class, a lot of fun, a lot of excitement to the area. Don't forget, I mean, if you could build a casino or or an aquarium and still have all sorts of other land available here. Um, but some of you may may say, you know what, we should just leave it to green space. Uh, maybe open walkways, et cetera, et cetera as, uh, you know, sort of an equivalent to Stanley Park, Vancouver, or Central Park in New York. I don't know. Um, we have a lot of green space around. We've got, it's called the Central Experimental Farm. Um, but aside from that, what, what would you like to see there? How about a uh, permanent amusement park? Um, Man in his world kind of a thing? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Another museum of some sort? consolidate uh, museums there, low-cost housing, high-cost housing, housing of any kind. How about the new civic hospital? All sorts of dispute about the site that they have chosen now. Uh, it'd be a beautiful site for a brand-new civic hospital there. Uh, some sort of vision, uh, version of uh, Disney World. I don't know. What, 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 what would you like to see there? This is your territory. It sat vacant, well, not vacant, filled with weeds for 62 some odd years. What would you, it's your money, it's your country, it's your land, it's your city. What would you like to see there? Seriously. Uh, John, uh, just once again, go through how people get in touch with us. Yes, of course. Uh, the number here, and we'd love your calls. Uh, we'd love more calls. Flood us with calls, please. 613-413-2217. You can text that number as well. On Facebook, on Twitch, on Twitter, on YouTube, wherever you would ordinarily post your comments, you post them there, and they'll pop up on my screen. I can drag them over to the screen here and read them to Lowell as well. And I'm so glad you're bringing this up again after we talked about it a little bit yesterday because it really stuck with me yesterday, and I posted it on my Facebook last uh Last night, uh, and, and the conversation, I can't get over how unimaginative we are in the city. 
Green space, green space, green space, green space, green space. That's the answers I'm getting from people. They want green space. You know, and then you talk about the experimental farm and people are like, yeah, but that's a farm. But it's not. No, no. It's so much more than a farm. Yeah, I... uh, Do we need need to change the name on that maybe just to rebrand it, remarket it? Because people don't seem to think that that's available green space. That, to me, is our central park. Right, at, yeah, right in the center of the city. There's yeah, no, absolutely. There's no question. No, I have no problem. I mean, what, whatever we put at Lansdowne Park or at um, uh, La Breton Flats uh, with having lots of green space around there, that would that would be all kinds of, you know, seating areas, et cetera. Uh, maybe a big uh, concert, uh, outdoor concert. But I don't know. But uh, but we need, we need, there's no question, we need something innovative and exciting. You know, this this city has a sort of a reputation as the city that fun forgot, and to a degree, it's true. If you're a if you, for example, are a visitor, a tourist to the city of Ottawa, and you've got kids, even teenagers, like where would you take them? What would you what would you have your teenagers or youngsters do in this city? I'd be very interested to know. Um, so there's there's one. To, I have another another question here for you. Oh boy. The pressure is on. Oh, we have a, a phone call, Brett. We do. Yep, Brett, you're on uh, on uh, Plast the Radio. What's what's what do you think here? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Green. Yes, sir. Um, I was just uh, I, I don't know if you had already addressed this topic or not, but I was just wondering your thoughts on the 18 words that uh, you cannot say on TVC anymore. Uh, and if, uh, just wondering if you uh, believe that we're lacking common sense in the name of political correctness nowadays, also. Oh, you'd have you. That, that's I always love the guy that we we throw out these topics, and then the first caller has a, an entirely different topic. I love guys like you. Uh, you your, your question again, Brett, is what? Sorry. Uh, I, I'm just wondering if you had seen the article about 18 words you can't say on CBC anymore, oh, and yeah. if we're uh, lacking common sense uh, nowadays in the name of political correctness. Well, I think, I, I don't know if it's in the name of political, but we're certainly too many, in, in many ways, lacking common sense. No question about that. Any ideas? And Do you have any ideas what you would like to see at, at uh, La Breton Flats, Mert? No? Uh, yeah, like I, I know the senators. Uh, I know that I'd like to see them closer to downtown. Uh, yep. Basically, a, a, almost anything. Like, I mean, they got to do something with it. It's about time. It, it's got to got to happen i mean is it enough farting around with it and let's get this done absolutely uh do you, do you agree with me that at the very least we must open up the river we should be able to go down there to cafes and 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 restaurants and i don't know something along the river that don't you don't you agree that we've got to make better use of our waterfronts here oh 100 percent. like set up a boardwalk or something to, to walk down it's yep. such a beautiful view like, I mean, sunsets, like, you, there's nowhere to watch a sunset. Like, I mean, I have friends who, like, they'll post a picture online about uh, about a sunset, and I, I'm kind of, where did you go to find this sunset, you know? Like, it's <laughs> almost impossible. Like, it's just, you have to go sit on rocks or something like that, and where, I mean, a nice boardwalk or something like that, but kind of like what they have up in Pembroke, uh, up, uh, up there with a boardwalk. Uh, Pembroke I mean, has a me, boardwalk? Like, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't know that Pembroke had a boardwalk. Well, it was underwater for a little while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. you know, you know what? Someone has suggested that one of the features could be a boardwalk from the Breton Flats all the way through to Westboro Beach. I don't know if that's practical or who owns the land, but at, at, you know what? At least some of you people are thinking out there. Thanks, thank you, Brett, and I agree with you, sir. Uh, the 18 words that you can't say on CBC, just more political. But I, can I tell you something? I mean, nobody listens or watches CTV or, or CBC anymore anyway. So it doesn't, it's totally irrelevant. Thanks for the call, sir. Thank you. Um, my other, I, I, I have another topic here. The pressure is on to lower the federal voting age to 16 <clears throat> and thus guarantee that there would be nothing but liberal or NDP governments for the rest of time. I love this. Don't kid yourself. The pressure, all of it is coming from the left wing. And the reason it's coming from the left wing is they know that young people, you know, still in high school, teen brains, half developed, quarter developed, not developed at all, whatever it is, um, that they're always, or most of them are very idealistic they will vote for anything. You know, you promise them free ice cream, and that's probably who they're going to vote for. 
I'm not being facetious here. I think you understand my point. That that they would they would inevitably all ninety percent of kids sixteen would vote NDP. They think that Jagmeet Singh is cute as hell. Uh, they would vote NDP or liberal. So that's where the pressure is coming from. I don't think anybody with a brain uh, who really cares about the country believes that a sixteen year old can can make a reasonably uh, you know common sense decision concerning the fate of the country. I I just uh, the 16-year-old brain is, I mean, let's be, let's be very honest. The great overwhelming majority of 16-year-olds could not tell you who the prime minister is. They could not tell you the, the system of government in this country. They could not tell you the role that the queen or the crown plays. They would have, in fact, the, the great overwhelming majority of 16-year-olds would not be able to tell you where the St. Lawrence Seaway is. The, the great overwhelming majority of 16-year-olds would not be able to identify the three rivers whose confluence is here at Ottawa. So, Well, in uh, fairness, they can't even get to those rivers, so there's that. So they can't get to the rivers. So uh, to me, the, the pressure here, and it's considerable, is being applied by the NDP, but primarily the liberals. The liberals would love to have 16-year-old votes. They would, and you know what? If the 16-year-olds voted, uh, the, the, the liberals wouldn't even have to campaign anymore. Just, just you know, throw their names out there. We're, we're liberal here. We're with you, kids, and that would be it. Bangle. No more conservatives ever again. Beautiful. You may have some thoughts on that. Um, John, how about we got some... Uh, some texts coming in here. Sure. You want to go with the LeBreton thing first? Yeah. Or do you want to yeah, talk please. about 16 first? Okay. Yeah, I like that's, that's LeBreton. All right. Here's a text. Uh, I like the idea the two bidders offered that Melnick was part of and then screwed up. They had ideas of a canal with boat docks, park areas, casinos, and a hockey rink. Uh, an aquarium, says Deb. And let me just scroll to the top here, Lowell. We've got some suggestions. Green space, green space, green space is coming up time and time and time again. A water park, says Kathy. Uh, I suggested we do an indoor beach. I even showed one out of Japan where it's got a retractable roof. So in the summertime, it could actually be an outdoor beach, kind of like what they have at the West Edmonton Mall. Uh, building housing for people over 60, rent to income, says Donald. Uh, let me see. Theme park or tourist hub with restaurants and shops. My idea for Little Breton Flats, says Jules. Uh, Terry says, build Milky's beach. There you go. Thank you, Terry. Uh, waterfront, waterfront, waterfront. No other city leaves this jewel empty, says Anne. Uh, Rito Carlton may not like the idea of a casino, adds Chrissy. I loved the Toronto Aquarium, Michelle Ch says on Facebook. Also on Facebook, we have Kim saying, sounds really nice. Ottawa needs to get into the 20th century. We are so old-fashioned. A concert venue, restaurants, water, walkways. Can I just, uh, can I just uh, interrupt for a moment? Always. Uh, this may come as news to you, but we're not in the 20th century. I <laughs> I was doing the math as I read it. I'm like, wait a minute. Something doesn't sit right. I mean, it's okay to be behind well, the times, but he's a whole century behind. But, this is 20, 21st century. Go ahead, John. Her, Just her, it, makes her, it makes her point even more valid. We do. We need to, we, we should be in the 21st century. We need to get into the 20th. She's not wrong. Okay. Uh, yes, a race facility. So they're talking cars and, and bike racing. Lowell, I kept hearing Thomas McClare yesterday on various shows saying how it's about time voting changed to 16. Oh, sure. Um, 16 is way too young, says Kim. The kids would vote with whatever their parents tell them. And yes, they are immature and would vote liberal. Uh, Lisa adds that Trudeau is not qualified to vote either. Uh, I think that's what you mean. 18-year-olds uh, can barely make a common-sense decision, says Joshua. Uh, let me see. Eric, ha, 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 16. They mostly can't even figure out how to wear their pants. Yes, there are some, but mostly <laughs> no. <laughs> and says, offer free anything, and you'll get a vote. And uh, Dog Bones, watching on Twitch, says, mmm, ice Wait, cream. What? We, we have somebody who identifies himself as Dog Bones? Yes, we do do we gotta we gotta upgrade our listenership here somehow yes we do <laughs> talking about that you know the intro that you give for me is it be heard around the world actually um it's becoming more and more evidence that we are being heard around the world let me give you an example mm -hmm. uh, about a year ago uh very sadly debbie and i we sold our, our beloved property in the bahamas We've been there for many years it's a second home for us but we had to sell um the, the, the couple that bought it live in Idaho. Young couple with two children live in Idaho, near Boise. And um, they're a lovely young couple from, from everything that we can see. 
And guess what? We, we, Debbie has sort of carried on a conversation with them. You know, they bought our property. We're going to, and if we ever go back, we, we hope to rent it there. And guess what? The, her, she, the, the, the woman, the, the wife just wrote Debbie and said, you know what? My husband has started listening to Lowell and loves it. So ah, there we yeah. are. We're, we're, we're somewhere in Idaho, uh, the Bahamas. We have uh, done in Guatemala. We, we get uh, uh, all the time we hear from Guatemala. Uh, Norway, I know we have listeners in Norway. It's, it's quite astonishing. And, of course, uh, all throughout the West as well. Increasing uh, number of listeners from Saskatchewan and Alberta. God so bless inter- you folks. Interesting you bring this up today because I just logged in today to see the listener stats. So these are people who tune in either via smart speakers or on the website. It does not count the BTR app. It does not count Twitch. It doesn't count your show on Facebook, YouTube, etc. Those numbers would be separate. So this is just smart speakers and the website. So okay. the overwhelming majority, of course, is Canada. Second, United Kingdom. The United States, third, Spain. Finland, Lithuania, Japan, Germany, France, Italy, Hungary, New Zealand, India, Brazil, Mexico, Switzerland, Ukraine, Argentina, Iran, Guam, Turkey, Australia, the Russian Federation, Slovakia, the Philippines. They're all tuned into you, Lowell. The whole, the whole world is looking for common sense. They really are. 57 no different countries tuned in last month alone. Good for you. Good for you, you know. Good for us. One, one little guy, one little guy, one little entrepreneur. It's, it's, it's quite astonishing. Um. John, we, uh, do we have anything more? Um, what Lowell, somebody yep. somebody says? What? No China? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you saw that. Don't have yeah. any listeners in China. <laughs> I'll scroll down and see if China's there, uh, firing up their their internet radios with coal. Uh, Lowell, I have an 18 year old who doesn't really care about politics, but you're right with CTV and CBC promoting Trudeau and Singh, but she does think Singh is nice. L O L. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, this lowering of voting age is why Trudeau was paying 14 and 15 year olds during the start of the pandemic. Let me see. Let's uh, go over to email. Well, I thought we had an email there. Lol, we don't. So, sorry, Bahamas. Sorry. What's, yeah. Okay. What did you say about the Bahamas? Uh, Terry's like, Bahamas? What's Rihanna's phone number? She's the big celebrity in Bahamas these days. So. <laughs> Terry's just being. Oh, the big celebrity in the Bahamas is my daughter. She's right there now in the Bahamas. She's the biggest, as, as big as the celebrities get in the Bahamas. But as far at least as far as I'm concerned. Uh, John, I got my booster shot yesterday. Oh, how do you feel? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, no, no problems whatsoever. Arms, uh, I can, I can feel it a little bit when I rolled over during the night. No, when Debbie, there was none. She had no, no consequences at all. But um, no, nothing, just a t- just a little bit of a. Of, it's almost all gone in the arm. That's all. And yeah. I'm just wondering how many other how many people who are watching, listening, uh, have the booster shot or or plan to get it. I I think that I, I think it's becoming pretty evident that we're going to have to learn to live with some version of COVID. It's you know the mutations are going to continue. Uh, I would imagine that uh, we're going to have to have yearly shots, maybe even twice a year. Yep. Uh, I, I don't think there's much, much question about that. Just like we, the flu shots now, the flu shot, uh, you know, the, the, the flu virus changes somewhat and every year they have to adapt it further and further. One of the really amazing things is the ability that science, the big pharma, the pharmaceutical firms have now to, to make the, the rapid changes in these vaccines, to make them effective. In fact, uh, as you know, they're now saying that even if uh, we find that this new variant is resistant to vaccines by the or by early next year, which is only uh, about a month away, they will have a vaccine to handle that. So we can all breathe, I think, a little bit easier. It's it's nice to know. You know, big pharma or pharmacies, they, they, they get a lot of criticism. But I'm going to tell you, uh, there's a hell of a lot of us alive today, thanks to, to uh, the pharmaceutical industry. I'm one of them. In fact, I suspect there's very few of us alive, certainly over the age of 50, who would be alive if it, you know, if it were not for for the pills and the drugs and and everything else, including, I mean, the vaccines, polio, smallpox, yellow, all all of these things, which essentially have been eradicated, at least in the Western world. So, uh, the, the you know, the criticism is dished around sometimes, but on the, you know, there's no question that some of these companies are making good money. Uh, and I have no problem with that. They're saving millions of lives. Why wouldn't they make money? Uh, John, any more? I got a, we got a, a little uh, word in here for Shears, of course. We're, for Shields. Uh, yes, we for do. Shields, um, sorry. By the way, I just looked it up because they asked. China does listen. 0.14% of our audience last month was in China. In China. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, dear. I told oh, you. Dear. Around the world. All right. Let's get word into Shields. We do have some texts that we'll get to after we. Uh, wonderful. We wonderful. Yeah. Shields. Now, I, 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 yesterday and the last couple of days, I've talked about the, um, <laughs> the the butcher shop and the free steaks. And I'm getting re- lots of response on that. It, it's nice. To, I mean, there, there's no question that there are other butcher shops out there that buy local. But I, I think one of the best, one of the best known happens to be Shields and Pakenham. They buy only local beef, pork, chicken, et cetera, et cetera. So it's extremely fresh. You don't have to worry about it there. Uh, they do their own butchering there, their own sausage making. Um, it, 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 you know, when you're in there popping in to have a look at the appliances and, and buying a whole new uh, room full of appliances, might pick up a little bit of, uh, I don't know, some, some steak, hamburger, whatever. It, it, it's wonderful. And don't forget, folks, when it comes to appliances, I've said this before, I'll say it again. You will be hard pressed to find anywhere, including the big box stores, who can beat the prices at Shields. Check them out yourself. Don't take my word for it. Shields.ca. S C H E E L S dot C A. Good folks. John? All right. Uh, Anne is on Facebook. She says she's getting her booster shot December 24th. Good for her. Uh, Nina's impressed. You got your booster and you're not grumpy. <laughs> Donald Donald is waiting. I can be if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please please call and talk about anti-vaccine boosters and Yeah, uh, I have a word or two about them. I know you do. I just uh, had I just had had one of the anti-vaxxers. God, some of these people are mean bastards, eh? This guy this guy uh, is going to laugh and dance on my grave. And uh, I said you're going to be hard pressed to dance on my grave since my understanding is they plan to create to cremate me. But anyway, <laughs> this, but you know, in this regard, I, I don't know, not, not, not all anti-vaxxers, but God, there's a lot of mean people, vicious people. You see, this is a, an, a, a doctor, very highly regarded doctor, been a, a doctor, family doctor for more than 30 years in Latchford, which is more or less a suburb of Sudbury. She, she has been hassled and threatened so much. She's given up. She says, I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. After 30 years of being a doctor, going home to home, saving lives, etc., cetera, she's, uh, she's given up. You know why? Because the, 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 the area there has, has had a real serious outbreak of COVID. So when people would phone to make an appointment in her clinic or see her, she would say now, she would ask them if you're vaccinated. Not that she was going to in any way refuse to treat unvaccinated. All she was doing was trying to in- increase the safety. She said, if you're not vaccinated, Okay, let's see if we can find a better way. Maybe we can do this by Zoom or or telephone, or maybe I can go to your home. But somehow or other, this got all misconstrued by these damn vicious anti-vaxxers, and they began to claim that she was not going to vax, she was not going to treat unvaccinated people, which was an outrageous lie. She was threatened, harassed so much that she has now, after 30 years, given up. She says, I just can't handle it anymore. I don't want to deal with this anymore. That's it. I'm packing it in as a doctor. So now, guess what? The, the community of Latchford doesn't have a doctor anymore. So, wow. the, the, But this is just, I mean, think of the picketing of hospitals by many of the anti-vaxxers. The picketing of, uh, of, of doctors' homes that went on. Think of the, 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 the airplanes that have had to be grounded because people, you know, were abusing the, the, the servers and, and the stewardesses. It's, it's, it's quite a, I, I don't know. There's a, there's a mean, bloody streak in the middle. Not, I want to make it plain, not all the anti-vaxxers. No, no. But, but there's a mean streak running rampant through the anti-vax movement. And th- just think of Randy Hillier. His two sons get involved in some sort of, of problem in a Perth restaurant, well-known Perth restaurant. They refuse to to wear masks or whatever. And the police are called. There's some sort of confrontation. And as a con- so Randy Hillier says, I'm going to call for a boycott of all Perth restaurants, all Perth businesses. I mean, just a bloody mean streak that goes through this. And, and I don't know about you, but in, in 60 years of broadcasting, I mean, I've covered every, from from civil rights, the Vietnam War, women's movement. Uh, I, I could go on all of the things, the abortion debates, uh, all of these things. <clears throat> I've, I've had some death threats. I, I've had, uh, I've been hassled. Uh, the police have, have told me to take different routes home, that kind of thing. But I don't think I have ever had the kind of vicious, concentrated harassment I have had 
since I've advocated getting vaccine. I have, I don't know what it is. I don't know if you've experienced anything like this, but boy, oh boy, I'll tell you. It just, for a while, it was vicious there. In fact, it was so bad that at one point I went on the area and I said, look, you people anti-vaxxers, I, I don't want you on my program. Mm -hmm. And the reason for it was, I knew if you heard what, what I was saying, I was just going to be, ha I've had calls in the middle of the night from some of these people. So uh, it's not all by any stretch, but there's a mean, bloody streak running right through it. Uh, John, any more uh, uh, comments coming in here, please? Lots, and, and and I say it to you all the time. I don't know how you do it, and you've done it all your life. I'm I'm learning. You, you develop know. a very thin skin or thick you skin, have to. but but you have but, to. But, but some this... of the, some of the comments are so scary. And I mean, I've I was in the paper a couple of years ago for receiving a death threat. That's horrifying. And some of the comments I get from, like you said, a very small but very vocal minority. Uh, look, if you choose not to get the vaccine, that's your choice. That's your right. I respect it. Um, I, I disagree with you, but I respect your choice. But when it's this militant bunch and the threats that I don't think people are really aware of just what people in the media receive from these people. And I don't publish half the stuff. So here's Jones saying, you have no business calling anti-vaxxers bastards. And by the way, I've been double vaxxed. Shame on you, says Joan. Joan? I, you know what? I have every right to see my yeah. inbox, Joan. If you'd like to see my inbox, and I can't imagine what Lowell's looks yeah. like. Yeah, you don't. You know, well, ask ask the doctor from Latchford who has just resigned because of the harassment. You yep. have no idea what goes on. Those of us who speak out and say get vaccinated, this is the only hope. You you have no idea the harassment that we are subjected to. And if I'm calling those people who are doing that bastards, you're damn right, and I'll call them bastards again. And, you know, going to dance on my grave. Right, right, right. Go ahead, John. Uh, Lisa says there was a mother, and a young mom and her son harassed at a North Bay clinic for vaccinating her children. See, I mean, they're, they're, they're ruthless. There's, there's no question about it. Go ahead. Uh, not just the unvaccinated people in general are becoming mean and impatient, says Kathy. Uh, let me see. Karma. These anti-vaxxers, says Chrissy. These anti-people would be the first to call for any medical help if they got sick or hurt, says Lynn. She's on Facebook. Uh, imagine if we didn't get polio shots, says Terry. Uh, let me see. It's okay to disagree, but don't call names, says Kathy. Peter says, if you want to get a vax, get it. If not, don't. I got mine, and I'm not going to argue about it with them. I love hate mail. Fuels me on, says Peter. And Lowell, you did say not all of them, says Mike. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, there's no question that, that that there are some very decent people. They're, they're, they're misguided. Of course. And I, I believe that they pose a danger to us all. But um, I, I have very, I'm, to be honest with you, I have difficulty respecting people who pose a threat to us. I, I, I am told that I should respect people, for example, who are cutting in and out of traffic and risking their lives. Uh, to me, uh, those people who aren't getting vaccinated pr present a risk to us all, to me, to you, to, to the entire community. Um, and I, I have a lot of difficulty having respect. However, by no means am I saying that they are all mean or anything else. But there certainly is, and I, all I am saying is, there is a vicious, mean streak running through that movement. Ask the doctor in Latchford. Just at 30 years, a doctor going house to house, house calls and so forth, so harassed. Can you imagine the kind of harassment she must have endured that she quits the profession after 30 years? I can imagine. I, I, like you said, you and I both get a taste of it. Any broadcaster does. The mean streak. Yeah. Thank you all. We will be back tomorrow. Uh, and anybody that wants to dance on my grave, as I say, you're going to have a lot of difficulty. Thank you all. We'll be back. The Lowell Green Show is seen and heard live around the world at 2 p.m. Eastern. Connect with us online at blasttheradio.com slash Lowell Green. Can't join us live? Download the Lowell Green Podcast. Available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Ask your smart speaker to play the Lowell Green Podcast. This is a production of blasttheradio.com.